create a perfect world in our heads. There may be only minutes, seconds left of someone's life. Why waste time? Well, let me ask you something. You want it all, don't you? Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Resourceful Agent Radio Show. I'm your host, Andy Silvius. Today I have a local business owner, Bruce Regal, mm-hmm. owner of Glen Rose Plumbing, and uh, super excited to have you here, buddy. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, appreciate it. I know you're busy, so. Hey, no worries. Um, I want to make it clear, everybody, if you guys uh, listen all the way to the end, we got some exciting news to tell you, so. So anyways, why don't you tell us a little bit, um, where can everybody contact you? Um, well, our website is glenroseplumbing.com and uh, Facebook, we're all over Facebook and uh, Glen Rose Service Incorporated okay. on Facebook and Instagram, um, Glen Rose Service also. Okay. Yep. Awesome. What areas do you service up here? Uh, basically the I-90 corridor for, um, about, you know, Medical Lake to well into Idaho. Okay. You know, and, uh, down to Pullman and up to Sandpoint. Yeah. And we recently expanded to, uh, Seattle. That's yeah. a big, that's uh, a big jump. <laughs> yep. 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 How's that's that exciting. going? Oh, it, uh, starting out slow, um, Learning some lessons. Uh, you know, uh, we have one truck over there uh, breaking into that market. It's a it's a big, well-established market. Right. And so, um, you know, thankfully we have a lot of commercial accounts over here that are putting us to work over there. Yeah. And so we are also trying to break into the residential. Uh, you know, we, we do residential on the east side, and we're trying to get into the, res- the residential over there. Um, but we, you know, that's kind of slow right now. Okay. Well, yeah. it's just There's take a lot time. of competition. Yeah. Take yeah. time, but you'll build it up. Yeah. It's been about four months and we anticipate about, you know, a total of about six months. We should be clicking along pretty good. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Glad to hear it. Yep. Uh, I want to remind everybody, if you guys enjoy the episode, please like, share, subscribe, uh, whatever platform you're on, anything, uh, you can do to share this with everybody else. Um, everything helps. So. Let's dive in a bit to, so are you initially, are you originally from North Idaho? No, I am not. I'm one of those Californians, <laughs> <laughs> but I consider myself an uh, Idahoan now. I mean, I've been here for 25, well, let's see, since 94. Okay. Yeah. Um, born and raised in California in the Bay Area. Um, you know, just basically went through high school there. Uh started my career there yeah and nine years into my career i moved up here so let's dive into that a little bit your career were you doing plumbing years ago i mean how long you been in business yeah i started plumbing uh or i started out in the plumbing trades as a tradesman so basically a laborer okay uh the year after i graduated and the company i got hired on with they uh bring you into the union right away. And so I got into the plumbers union then and, uh, started my career and it was a blast working in Silicon Valley. Um, all kinds of crazy plumbing going on then. (laughs) And, uh, so anyway, I had nine years there and, uh, moved up here in 94. Okay. So how old were you back in 94? Are you still pretty young? Uh, yeah. Getting started in the, in the business. I mean, you've been doing nine years. Well, I was, uh, so what would that make me? Uh, you don't have to tell everybody. <laughs> well, no, that's fine. I was, you know, I was, uh, about, uh, 28 when I moved up here. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, uh, so what was the question? 
I mean, I was about 28 when I No, moved. just uh, basically finding out where you got started. So yeah. you got into plumbing right out of high school. Right out of high school, yeah. Working I, for another company. When you moved up here, were you working for another company as well, or did you start your company then? Uh, no, I worked for other companies, a few of them. You know, as you can imagine, I mean, every area is, you know, the companies have their core guys. And so right. I basically had to kind of be here long enough to break into that. Yeah. You know, so. Prove that, yourself. Yeah, that took a few years. And uh, so um, w- when I did move up here, uh, there was no work in the union. I was union down there. And so when I did move up here, there was no work in the union. So I just went non-union. You know, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't want to sit on their list. So I worked for somebody for up until 2011 when I bought my business. So was plumbing something that you thought you would be doing or was it something you kind of fell into? Uh, Sort of both. When I was in high school, I wasn't playing traditional high school sports. I was, uh, my sport of choice was Olympic lifting. Okay. And so that was something that I did through school, but it was not a school sport and it wasn't something that you got a scholarship for and went to college. And my dad also told me, he said, uh, you know, my grades were so, so, and he said, (laughs) well, I, I don't think you're getting a scholarship for grades and I'm not paying for college. So I don't think college is in the cards for you. And at that time, I don't know, I, I believed him. And he uh, told me, he said... Um, it got in your head that you weren't going to... Well, yeah, I mean, I wasn't. I, I didn't know enough to think... I didn't know until a few years later that anybody can go to college. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you really didn't even have to pay. Right. You know, at the time, I mean, if you had the right scenario. Um, but anyway, uh, he said, you ought to be... You know, he used to tell all the young people that he worked with and myself, you know, you ought to get into the uh, electrical trade or the plumbing trade, you know, and you, I think you'll do well and... So one day I was in the park playing frisbee with some friends, you know, after high school, and a, a friend of mine offered me a job, and I asked him where it was, and he said a plumbing company, and the light bulb went off, and so you're just your wheels are turning then because you guys already had the conversation that yeah, that's something you yeah. should do, right, right. Okay. So it was just kind of something that happened. So I I did not pursue it, it just kind of found me, right, yeah. But I enjoyed it. It was definitely me, a, a good fit, really, yeah. So yeah. it worked out. I took it serious, yeah. I was good at it. Am good at it. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess, you know, at what point did you decide that you didn't want to just be an employee anymore and you wanted to run your own company? When I was in the union down California. Really? Yeah. I, after a few years, um, it was just kind of like like looking at my, you know, I got to know all the guys I worked with that were ahead of me. Yeah. And... Um, when I was an apprentice and they were journeymen and it was kind of like looking in a crystal ball, you know, you're going to reach this wage for the rest of your life, you know, other than incremental increases. Right. And you're going to have a life somewhat like these guys. Yeah. And that, and I bet you anything, they were all miserable and unhappy. Well, just a lot of them. Very average. Yeah. And I wasn't into it. Yep. Yeah. And then, uh, not that we need to get uh, political or anything, but then, <laughs> then one day my uh, business agent handed me a bumper sticker for Clinton Gore, <laughs> and I said, "Yeah, I don't think so." <laughs> and uh, okay, so so you decided back when you were in California, you didn't want to be in unions, and then you nine years in down there, right? Mm, one year before being vested. Oh man, that probably hurt. <laughs> yeah. I want it out, though. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. It's just in you, you know? Yeah, you know. Yeah. It, it's the same thing. Like, I was a mechanic for years, you know? I don't... I think it was close to 10 years or so, mm-hmm. 9 or 10 years, and uh, working on hi- hydraulics, heavy equipment, stuff like that. Not for me. Yeah. I could do it. I just don't... It wasn't for me, and I knew it, and I know that every day that I would go into work, I was not happy what I was doing. Yeah. You know, you just, you see the people that have been doing it for 30 years, and there's nothing wrong with that if they're happy with it and like it. But a lot of times I found that people just stayed and continued to do that because they didn't think there was anything else for them, mm-hmm. you know. Or they don't want to go through what they cons- what they think will be paying to right. change. Right. Yeah. So I think what's cool, though, for, 
why I was intrigued by wanting to talk with you is you took your trade and then you grew it into something bigger. You know, you had a bigger vision than, mm -hmm. than what everybody else had in the union. So how long were you up here doing plumbing before you ended up starting, starting up your business? 94 to 2011. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's actually, uh, my father-in-law started the company back in the same, I, a year after I entered the trade. So he's, I think he started it in 1986. And, uh, anyway, he retired in 2000 something around there. I mean, he wasn't completely done when he sold us the business, but, uh, so he had started it before you. Oh yeah. You, and it was a much your, bigger company. Did you know your wife back in California? Or no, no. I met her. I came to work for them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, about. Uh oh. Found two, the boss's daughter. Yeah. Two thousand. <laughs> two thousand four ish or five. Okay. Yeah. Two thousand maybe three or four. I don't know. Somewhere around there. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. So you worked for him what about eight years, seven eight yeah, years? A, a few years. Yeah. Yeah, and then. Uh, yeah, and ended up uh, managing the service department, and then he was retiring right about when the, the recession hit. Yeah. And uh, at that point, he stayed in business. I mean, he's a debt-free kind of guy, you know, and he just stayed in, to, but he just wasn't getting work, and so finally he just closed the doors. We bought the service department, and uh, rather than get jobs, uh, my wife ran basically the office. You bought the service department from yeah, him. He, yeah, he he um, he did large scale construction, plumbing construction. Okay. Yeah, and we didn't want to. I, I, you know, I did that as an employee in California, but I didn't want to do it as a business owner. Right. Yeah, and so I got used to the service. You know, cash on delivery. Yep. Yeah. Instead of chasing money. What was it about the the new construction stuff that you didn't like? Was it just farther it was, out on? It, it was fun in my twenties. You know, I mean, it's kind of a macho thing. I mean, you're doing the deal, and you got all the guys on the job and everything, you know. And right. I mean, that was fun, but I don't know. I was just past that, you know. I, you think as a, from a business point, you get more overextended doing something like that than doing the well, service? Well, you can. Right. Yeah, I mean, you're, you know, you're in court. You're chasing money. You, I mean, you know, you have more staff, you know, estimators, project managers. You're, right. you know, hiring, laying off crews, and it's, you know. Much larger scale. Yeah. Yeah. We just, I didn't want any part of it. Yeah. So what kind of hurdles did you face? Like once you guys took on that service department, you know, cause you hadn't been a business owner before, right? Right. So what did you, what kind of things did you struggle with in the beginning stages of your business? The biggest struggle I think is something a lot of business owners face. And that is just making the transition to work on your business and not in it. Mm -hmm. It's hard to, you know, uh, um, when we bought it for year, you know, for several years, we had two to three guys, mostly two trucks on the road. Yeah. You know, we're a fairly small company. Um, Was that including you? Or yeah, no? including okay. me. And so when you are either half or a third of the revenue, and, you know, you're good at it, and it's hard to, you know. It's hard to step out of that. Yeah, even if you, oh, well, I can hire another guy and replace me. But sure, you can do that. But now you have X amount of dollars sitting on the sidelines, and now what do you, you know, you got to have a skill set to, you know, match that and bring that to the table right. or, or more. And if you step out too early and you know, you know, people have that fear of stepping out of it and then, now you know you're not being productive. You could be bringing in all this income yeah. or revenue. Yeah, it's like, and so you go through that process of what do I, what do I do now? Yeah, and so it, it took a few years to figure out what do I do now, and so now I know, and uh, we've just within really, I mean, this year, 2019, we've done that. You know, so fairly recently. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Thank goodness. Yeah, I mean, yeah, man. Been in the truck many years, you know, many hours a day. Kind of reminds me of uh, you. You familiar with Robert Kiyosaki? Oh yeah. So he's got the the book, The Cash Flow Quad Quadrant. Right. I started reading that recently. You know, they talk about being an employee, self employed, business owner, or yeah. investor, mm -hmm. and it it kind of puts in perspective for you. Um, 
how, if you hadn't stepped, if you hadn't figured out how to fill your spot, how long would it be if you stepped away from your business for it to keep running? Right. Yeah. Cause yeah. if you were a third of the revenue that right. hurt, if you walked away and said, I'm just going to stand on the sidelines and let sure. the company run cause you hadn't figured out how to fill your position. Right. right. So, um, yeah, even now, even now it's, you know, every once in a while during the day, it's like, eh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. You know, you got several people in the office and you're just thinking, okay, is this cool? Is this the way it's supposed to go? You know? Right. Yeah. If you're not a little bit uncomfortable though, you know, right. you have to be a little uncomfortable for change to happen. Sure. So yeah, that's awesome. All right. So you guys are, you know, just within this last year, you guys started kind of opening up, like you said, replacing your position mm-hmm. so you can kind of run your business from an outside perspective. Right. Um, how's it going? I mean, how's, how's business? Uh, great, great. Um, there was plenty of stuff that needed to be done that we had known about for a long time. Um, and we're working on those things. Uh, we hired, uh, we recently, well, recently got rid of our longtime company who was doing our marketing mm-hmm. and hired a in-house marketing gal. She does a fantastic job. She's handling handling all our social media, everything. You know, I mean, everything from business cards, social media, Google, everything. Um, she's doing a fantastic. Probably saves a ton of money doing that in house too. It's saving some money and a huge bang for the buck mm-hmm. increase. Yeah, big time. And just the just our appearance alone. I mean, before her. Uh, I mean, we really had no, I mean, we existed on Facebook, Instagram and everything else, you know, Right. but, uh, we weren't doing anything, you know, I mean, it was just, we were there, you know, and now we are. Cause the media company you hired wasn't just wasn't doing yeah, what you no, needed them to. No. Well, they actually weren't hired for a social media. Okay. They were just mainly hired for a Google and stuff like that, you know, yeah. however, um, Anyway, so we, we made a change, and it's awesome. She's doing a fantastic job. Her name's Kat. She's she's cool. She's doing a great job. How about how many, how many trucks are you guys running right now? We have four. Four on this the area? east side, yeah. North Idaho and uh, Spokane, eastern Washington, and one over in Seattle. Okay. Yeah, I just kind of lost my train of thought as far as, you know. Oh, you're good? Yeah, the last question. There. But, um yeah, business is good. Um, uh, we are definitely, we've always kept our guys busy. We, we've always been profitable. You know, we've always, I mean, we, you know, uh, what people like about us is we answer the phone. Yeah. A real live um, Not per, a- yeah, person answers the phone and she's great at it. Yeah. Always has been, very professional. Uh, we're on time, you know, and so... And we do good work. And, you know, I mean, of course, you can't please everybody, but, you know, we do a good right. job. And so we're, we're happy with the way things are going. Um, oh, I know what I was going to say. Uh, yesterday, my my uh, wife and I met and um, set some goals for the year, for 2020. Okay. And we hadn't done that for about four years. But what we would realized was we reached them. And you were just kind of stagnant. Yeah, yeah. We we're looking. We we're like, oh wow, we got you know, we got to set new goals. We you know, we met our goals, right? And so that was exciting. So we we we, you know, wrote out the next three years, and then broke it down quarterly. And That's so cool. yeah, we're we're ready to rock. We did that uh, New Year's Day. You know, I just had a I just recorded a show with Richard from Ink Lab Screenprint Studio. And yeah, we we covered the same thing on on planning out goals and everything, and uh, a, I think a lot of people break down their goals just simply by that year. Mm-hmm. You know, so most people look at they start getting closer to the first of the year, and uh, then they start think they only think about that one next year. They don't they're not thinking three, five, ten years out. Right. And I was talking with him about it. You know, he he had broken them down by five years, and then, you know incrementally backwards from there worked it backwards right and i like how you did that you know you did the three years and then you broke it down quarterly to be able to achieve your goals right so that's cool yeah and then then i'll i will break it down farther oh yeah (laughs) yeah from quarterly to you know like monthly and then weekly and daily and yeah you know all that
that jazz, but um, I don't know if my wife will. I don't get into that with her. Mm-hmm. I just, you know. Well, I think it's important, though. I mean, I have to do the same thing with real estate. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't want there to be any question about what am I going to achieve in a year, two years, five years. You know, I want to yeah. know, like, right. I'm hitting these goals, and if I don't hit these goals, then I need to step it up the next year to make up for that. You know, yeah. so but if I plan it out right, there shouldn't be a reason why I'm not hitting the goals I need to. Right. Um, you just do if you if you're working. Were you surprised um, when you guys actually like? realize that you hit your goals and and you hadn't even been really focusing on them uh i don't know if surprised would be a good way of putting it but i i I mean it did kind of occur to us all of a sudden but um i it was on my mind to have a meeting with her for a while and you know what i wasn't doing and i didn't realize i mean there's just just these little intricacies when you work together with husband and wife in an office you know she's waiting for me to like make an appointment set a time aside that you guys could figure it like go over it and i'm just popping into her office or asking while at home or whatever and she's just like no dude (laughs) you know i mean she's treating it more like a business thing you're looking at it like why not? We're family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So anyway, so we finally made an appointment. And we we did that, and um, but no, it wasn't a surprise. But uh, no, because we had it pretty. I mean, I let her do the notes and you know write it all out. And yeah. Make the outline and everything. Um, it, mostly because I was in a truck anywhere from eight to fourteen, sixteen hours a day, and she's at a desk a lot, mm-hmm. and so in between tasks, she can do that stuff. And so she had it very detailed, you know, I mean, right. Oh yeah. And she does an excellent job at it. And so we had a very clear picture of where we were headed. For the next three years. Yeah. With very specific dates, right down to the penny. I mean, you know, as far as financial goals and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So she does a great job. And, uh, this recent goal setting session will be broken down like that in the near, very near future, next week or two. And so that'll be nice to well, crystallize that vision, you know. You guys will hit them. I mean, I don't doubt it, and, and I don't know if we should bring this up right now, but I hope down the road we're going to have another show with you on here mm-hmm. just talking about your real estate investments because you're getting awesome. into that. So yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm excited to see where that goes for you. Yeah, me too. In addition to your business growing. So, yeah. Um, so along the lines of you planning goals for your business, what, you know, what do you – what do you envision for your company? What's your future goal or growth that you want to see your company at? In well, it, uh, for our, and it doesn't have to be your specific goals, but like no. if you if you could picture your company going in a direction that you really want it to end up, yeah, what would it be? Well, the next, okay, so the next, uh, what do they say? High altitude goal yeah. is just doubling our business. So we have, like I said, four or five trucks on the road, five including Seattle. Yeah. So we want to double that in the very near future. Um, and in addition to that, we want to be more, have, have a general manager managing the company. And so us, you, so you as owners can step back a little bit right, and, and just manage. Yeah. Yeah. And, and do, you know, I want to be in charge of vision and growth and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. And Heather will always, I mean, she gets off on books. Yep. You know, so. My wife's the same way. Yeah. <laughs> so if she could just do that, you know, a few hours a week. Right. She would love life, you know, because she, yeah. So anyway. So you're, you're, you get excited by the big picture stuff, right? Yeah. More than the day-to-day grind. You've right. done that for t- over 20 years now. 35. 35 years. Yeah. My math's not very good when we're sitting here but, well, no, recording yeah. on a microphone. <laughs> yeah, no. But, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, that's awesome, though, to yeah. be able to, to have those goals to set in place so that you can do what you want to do and build your company how you want it. Yep, yep. So why don't you tell me something you're you're super passionate about? I mean, it could be business, personal. I mean, what's something out there that, like, well, gets you super amped up? I think the the things I'm most passionate about are just the things I have in my life right now. I mean, when I was younger, I was passionate about weightlifting and fishing. Yeah. But when I started... At the same time? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So uh, 
but when I started working, that all kind of took a back seat. You yeah. know, I don't know why. I just for some reason I just I'm I'm one of those guys that I don't take days off. Yeah. You know, and I'm only not at work if you know I can't get up. Right. And so um, I'm passionate about work, my business. I'm passionate about real estate. I'm mostly passionate about my wife and kids, and uh, I. Uh, not that I, uh, you know, I'm passionate about my Lord and Savior. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, and for, uh, um, I trade currencies, and I really enjoy that. Do you? Yeah. Something you like? Yeah. I, well, I have high hopes of that being another substantial income stream. Right. It has yet to... Take off? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'm ahead. Yeah. <laughs> but that's it. Right. Yeah. You know, and there's hope. And there's hope. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think yeah. if you just keep going with it, you know, yeah. it's going to grow. We were talking off camera about this. Like, I don't know much about, you know, Bitcoin and all these different currencies that are coming out. Um, but I do know that they, they're they becoming more prevalent, you know? Oh, yeah. And I, I have no idea where they're going to go. Right. You know, I, I, I don't I don't really trade... Uh, uh, what do they call those? Um, well, Bitcoin. What, what, what's the? I don't trade those currencies. You don't trade cryptocurrencies. Cri- crypto. There you go. Okay. Yeah. No, I. Um, I just trade. Uh, you know the major currencies. You know, I mean, there's seven or eleven of them. Like so that, you know, why don't we touch on that for a minute? How, sure. how does that work? Well, you can do it from your phone. I don't. I don't place, um, I will place backup trades on my phone, but I place all my trades from my desktop just because it's a more, uh, you know, a, a different interface. Yeah. Yeah. Interface. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but you monitor it from your phone and I can close trades from my phone. I basically day trade, okay. you know, or swing trade. And, uh, it's taken a while. I've been doing it since 2011. And I had a guy, a friend, uh, that was teaching me, and um, he got me a long ways, you know. And I learned a lot through studying and stuff like that. Um, but like I said, I'm just getting to the point where I'm ahead. But it, it, it's you know, it's a lot of lessons learned. Um, as far as currencies, um, I mean, I don't know what. You know, right? right. It, it, there's a lot to learn. It's not. It's definitely not something. You know, I thought I was going to be a millionaire already. Yeah, yeah, but no. You got that entrepreneur style, and you're like, we 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 see something, and we're going to go after yeah, it I'm hardcore gonna, I'm and gonna tackle that too. Yeah, yeah, but it's you know, being a retail trader, um, you know, it, it's it's not easy. It what got no you into it? Was time. it your was? I mean, how did you even come across something like that and think? This is what I want to I want to start going after this. Well, I want I my uncle. Uh, he was an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. a business owner all his life, and he started trading on the stock market like back in the '90s. And then I started hearing about you know trading and stuff like that. And I mean, I, I was interested back when you still had to look at the Wall Street Journal, you know, <laughs> to get all the information. Right, right. It wasn't at the you know tip of your fingertips. No, your, no, your, and. It, yeah, and um, but shortly after that, I mean, the '90s, you know, I mean, everybody was online trading, but I knew yeah. nothing about it. And then the the year I bought my business, actually, uh, 2011, just out of the blue, a uh, guy that owns um, a water damage company, he contacted me. He wanted uh, they usually contact plumbers because they want plumbers to funnel them work. Yeah, you know floods and stuff like that. So we got coffee one day, and he just brought up trading. And again, it was like one of those moments. Is like, Bing, the light bulb went. Right. Oh yeah, I'm interested in this. And so, you know, I, I, I'm just one of those people that's always been looking. Yeah. So if you bring something, I mean, I'm I'm open minded. I'll check it out. Right. You know. And uh, so, you know, uh, he said, you know, you interested in trading currencies? I said sure. And so. Uh, you know, I would send him business. He would spend untold hours for free, just teaching teach. you. Yeah. You yeah. ever you ever wonder sometimes? I feel like uh, 
when you're on that frequency or you, you have something that you've kind of been focusing on, especially when you fully commit to something and, and you're really obsessed with it, let's say you were obsessed with currencies, how things just start popping up, right? I mean, like like you said, that guy, you, the light bulb went off and oh, he yeah. started bringing up right. currencies and you're, you kind of struck you because you'd been thinking about right. it. It's something that was on your mind. You'd been, you kind of, like, that's what I mean by frequency. You were, yeah. like you're, uh, something you were in tune with and then when it happened, something, it's like you ever, your RAS system. Yeah. Reticular activated system. You ever think like, yeah. so I think, I think I know like we're, you're a guy and you, you like trucks, I'm sure. Trucks, mm-hmm. motorcycles. Yep. So have you ever had like a, a truck you really wanted and once you see it, then oh, you yeah. start seeing it everywhere. Right, the, right. I mean, just all over the roads, Yep. whatever it is, you notice it. So yeah. it's kind of the same thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, the universe just kind of brings it yeah. your way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you and you start noticing, right. I guess, really. Right. Yeah. All right. So I told everybody at the beginning of this that there was mm-hmm. something we were going to talk about. It was going to be exciting towards the end. Mm-hmm. So I obviously only know about this because we've spoken off camera. But what's uh, what's something big you guys are doing with your business right now? Well, um, about two years ago, I um, uh, maybe three years ago, I found myself uh, the only plumber in my business. And my wife was panicking. You know, I mean, we, we have this building, these mm-hmm. people in the office, these trucks. And we were, at the time, a two-man company, two-truck, you know, operating right. op, uh, operation. And uh, the guy, my other plumber, decided to leave and go work for somebody else. And so I was just kind of, I was just scrambling, you know. I mean, we, we were trying everything to find plumbers. And uh, in the economy that we were in, I mean, without getting into details and analyzing what happened, right. basically, you know, there, there's not enough skilled licensed tradesmen to fill all the jobs needed. Yeah. And so, you know, all the, you know, I mean, all these um, services online that you pay for and everything to bring you, you know, applicants and stuff like that. None of that stuff worked. Right. I mean, it was just a frustration. And really what ended up working for us, we, I mean, other than, I mean, my wife, my wife and I got serious. I mean, we were up 4.30 in the morning on the couch with a cup of coffee praying. I mean, we were talking and together and uh, just, you know, I mean, we were desperate. You know, she was scared and I saw that she was scared, you know, and it was my job to, yeah, you know, so I, I was right there with her, you know, and... um so anyway, uh, we made some tweaks to our website, and believe it or not, I mean, the, these plumbers applied on our website. Mm-hmm. I mean, that you know, we found some great plumbers. Meanwhile, you know, there's all these companies out there saying they'll oh yeah they'll get you employees for yeah. if you pay them and yeah, yeah whatever it was and and Heather pays that stuff. I I didn't really pay attention to that, but. Um, I just know I would get the applicants, right? you know, and it wasn't what we were looking for. <laughs> and so anyway, we end up with, I think, I think we had, uh, five guys cross our path and, you know, three stuck and, uh, they're good guys. And, um, so anyway, what that did was I was just thinking about it, you know, reflecting on it. And I thought, I've got to do something different. I am so sick and tired of doing this old school hanging flyers in the supply (laughs) houses or Craigslist or what, you know, whatever. And, um, so I was just trying to think out of the box. Um, and, uh, I thought maybe I can make my, my place of business where my guys work a fun place, you know, for them to work or, or an exciting place or a guy's place. I mean, whatever, something that would draw people to come to my business and also, uh, get us, you know, known more in the community. And, um, so I thought, how could we do something, you know, give back, but also receive, you know? And, um, so, what I came up with is um, 
we actually came up with several good ideas. A couple of them were one of my plumber's uh, ideas, but uh, the one we started was we are building a custom bobber from bobber is a chopper for those who don't know what a bobber is yeah. you know custom harley yeah. chopper um but bobber style uh we are building that from frame up and so we God, uh, that's awesome yeah that's... yeah i know I'm, I'm just so jacked i mean <laughs> i used to have a harley davidson and but i just you know i mean family man business right. owner it was, right. it was hard to find time to ride it so i eventually sold it but i love bikes and uh, so anyway, we are uh, building one from frame up. We had a custom frame made by Flyright out of California, the Bay Area. And they did a fantastic job. And um, we are slowly trickling parts into the pile. And our goal is to uh, give it away to a combat veteran in 2020. This year. Yeah, this year. I know. It's coming up fast. Uh oh. Put it, the pressure on. I know, man. I was thinking you guys were farther out than that. Well, you know, <laughs> every day that goes on, I think <laughs> I should probably be farther out than that, you know? But, um, so you right, know, we just started 2020. We're good. I, I, I made the shirts, you know, and yeah. they say 2020 on the back. Oh, you got to commit now. Yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway, uh, you know, I love the military. I'm not a veteran myself, um, but both my wife and myself, uh, my family have veterans in it. Yeah. And I think in all the branches. And my father in law, who started the company, was a veteran. And uh, uh, we love our freedom and we appreciate their sacrifice. And I mean, I, I don't know anybody else who better deserves, you know, God, I think to that's receive so cool. something like that. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. And so we're excited about it. And we plan on, you know, building the momentum. And it's got a little bit of momentum right now. Right. My guys are excited about it, you know, about building the bike. And we talked so about So you are, it. you're going to have your employees, everyone help you, like everyone's going to be involved working on it? Right. Yep. Yep. We're all, you know, mechanics, Yeah. you know, plumbing mechanics. But, you know, we're going to uh, build the bike. I mean, I'm sure there'll be things that we don't know how to do. I mean, right. we're, we're not going to paint it, yep. you know. And uh, But anyway, yeah, we're going to put this together, try to do a really great job. It's going to turn out fantastic, I'm sure, because I'm not going to let it be anything otherwise. Oh, man, that's so cool. Yeah. I just, I love bobbers in general. Like, yeah. So that, that's Yeah, that is it's exciting. definitely my style of bike, not a bagger. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> um so yeah, we're going to uh, be hitting our social media pretty hard, and um, we, you know, I'm looking for sponsors and stuff like that. I mean, it's a lot of money; I can't afford to, you know, do the whole thing out of right. pocket. But we will have a community effort in building this bike. We're just kind of facilitating it and paying some along the way, um, and uh, we, I think, at least the vision so far is to have people from really around the country that was going to be my next question i yeah. wasn't sure if it was a local thing so, no uh, people around the country solicit um uh recipients or suggest recipients and send their whatever their story in you know uh, however they do that you know whether it's you know sending us an email or a letter or whatever you got my wheels turning now i'm thinking i'm thinking that like different ideas how, how do you start generating that kind of traction because that... yeah well i'm going to announce it live mm -hmm. on social media and you know whatever i mean commercial or you know on instagram and stuff like that. we've already announced it but in a very kind of low-key way but it right. is officially announced yeah i've seen a few of the you guys things talking about right. it and everything yeah um yeah so we're excited about that everybody can help you out with it oh yeah i'll share it yeah. on mine i mean everybody can yeah it's stuff spreads like wildfire that doesn't even shouldn't even be spread around on social media. So right, this is something really good. Oh you yeah, know? yeah. I think it'll go. Yeah, and it's something I I think I'd like to do that every year. You know, and maybe it'll pick up momentum. We'll do it more than once a year. You know, something like that. But I mean, I'm, I'm already thinking. You know, we want to do other projects. You know, same type of giveaway. But so, what did this do for you with the guys that you have working with you? At your shop, I mean, was this something that like really intrigued them? Were they excited about working with somebody who wanted to do this? Yes, yeah, it, it did, and and uh, 
just so happens all the guys that work for me, well, except for my son, um, you know, they are, uh, they ride bikes and they, you okay. know, they all have an endorsement and everything. And so they're excited. And one of my plumbers, he's 60, uh, 61. He, uh, that was actually his first job was a motorcycle mechanic. Really? Yeah. Right. As a teenager for however many years. Yeah. Kind of funny. It, come full circle within a plumbing company. Yeah. To yeah. You build a bike. Oh yeah. And he owns several bikes now and he's always ridden them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He's a wild man. That's cool. Yeah. Dude, I'm, I'm excited to see it. Yeah. So am I. So am I. So what do you think? Uh, do you have any like plans on how you're going to paint it or anything like that? Well, um, the paint will probably be themed around the recipient, you know, the color of their branch or something like that. that they so were you'll in. pick, you'll pick somebody before you complete right it. Right before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, so, it, you know, like uh, it'll be themed around the recipient's, uh, branch of service. And, uh, we thought maybe we'd do something custom in the saddle, you know, mm -hmm. with some leather work or something like that. Uh, it may end up somewhere else, but we thought we might do that. You know, right. you're not sure. I mean, you, right. you know, you think of all these things and. You know, who knows what it'll eventually turn out. But that's that's what's getting us excited anyway. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. That's cool. And I'm sure we'll all take it for a ride up and down the street, you know, <laughs> before we give it away. But, yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah. What did your wife think about that? Was it something she was on board with? Because um, sometimes, at least in my house, sometimes I come up with ideas that are like my wife's looking at me like, what's that going to do? For our business or what's that going to do you know yeah to help somebody well what happens with us is like um this for instance i brought it up i shared it mm -hmm. you know several times but what happens is like i pull the trigger <laughs> you know and <laughs> you just do it <laughs> yeah and and where she thought we were still talking about it, you know, it's just like real estate, you know, she, again, like I mentioned, she's, you know, her job, she's at a desk a lot. Right. And, uh, so she's constantly looking at real estate. It's in her blood. I mean, her dad's the same way, you know, and, and so every once in a while she'll send me a, you know, text or email and say, Hey, look at this place. We looked at it last year. You know, it's, it's lowered the price and it's back on the market, whatever. And like with our last uh, property we have in contract now, she sends me an email and I'm, I, I, you know, I agree with her, you know, what she thought of the property. And next thing you know, I mean, I, you know, I've, I'm looking at it. I'm putting an offer on it. You know, you're like, messaging to her like, okay, I'm already done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, this is done. Like, we got like, it. She's like, whoa, you know. <laughs> Does she want to think about it a little more? Well, she's excited about it or she wouldn't have sent it to me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just, I move on it where she, you know, she, she wants to see in black and white. Right. You know, yeah. Or I, I kind of do it in my head and, you know, talk to some people. And anyway. Well, with our conversations outside of the, you know, this podcast about real estate, I, I fully believe we're going to be back in here on another episode talking about your investments and awesome. how you guys have grown with that. So that's yeah, cool. Good. Um, I want to thank you though, for being here. I mean, it's taking time out of your day. You're busy. And uh, I really appreciate it. I know that everybody listening, they're going to be excited about the bobber coming out. Yeah. And I uh, just want to be able to share awesome. your story of being able to, you know, you were in a basically a career path you didn't like, and you made the best of it and built a company out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for having me. I'm yeah. glad to be here, and uh, this is fun. Yeah. We'll do another one, man. Yeah. I look forward to it. So. All right, everybody. Well, I want to thank you guys for listening. I uh, also want to remind you that if you enjoy the episode, um, please share it, like it, subscribe, you know, depending on if you're watching this on YouTube or listening on Spotify, um, trying to spread this around to everybody, uh, everybody that wants to listen to it, really. So um, the goal of this podcast is to pr provide solutions and influence others in business, real estate, finances, and personal development. So if you guys have any suggestions or any topics you'd like me to cover on here, go ahead and drop me a message at resourcefulagent.com, uh, or you can reach out to me on Facebook and Instagram at resourcefulagent. So thank you, guys. See you on the next one. Did you find what you were looking for? I've got some work to do.